The book club program provides creative solutions for effective instruction, organizing your classroom and planning your school year, integrating your curriculum, and assessing your students' academic progress. The instructional support you provide for your students is a thread that weaves through every component of the book club program. Well, there's instruction to help children become more fluent readers and better comprehenders of what they're reading. There's instruction to teach them different ways to respond in writing. There's instruction that has to do with um, both how to talk about books as well as what they might want to talk about when they talk about books. And then there's instruction that has to do with how to participate in the whole class when bringing um, ideas from individual book clubs together. As far as the literacy instruction, I feel that that's the underlying most important part. And with using book clubs, it's the student-led discussion groups that are the aim and the focus where most of the learning takes place. Usually I start each lesson with some kind of instruction, a mini lesson. Sometimes the mini lesson has to do with reviewing the story. At the beginning of the year, most of my lessons are instruction on skills and strategies that the kids need to be able to do book club, primarily focusing on how to discuss, what do you share in your groups, what do you write in your logs and then later moving into um, some of the reading strategies, things that they need to do to involve themselves with the text. If I see the children just having a lot of arguments, we need to go back and talk about how do you disagree in an agreeable way, and I need to have a mini lesson on a good way to do that so that everybody's voices are heard but nobody goes away with hurt feelings. We need to talk specifically about responding and listening and questioning, and those are some of my really early mini lessons. But the point here of the mini lesson, Kenny, is I want you guys to consider and continue thinking about questioning. When you write questions in your log, please keep in mind that there's two purposes, to clarify the story or to help you promote talk about the story. What kinds of questions, Kenny, are not like good it? questions? Um, do you like the book, yes or no? Okay, yes or no questions are typically not good questions. A question that just takes a yes or no answer isn't always that helpful because it doesn't help you understand the story more and it doesn't promote talk about the story. It's just yes, no, yes, no. It doesn't do much. You could add a why. You could add a why. Okay? And it's different to uh, just go around the group and each person read something as it is to actually listen to each other and respond to what the previous person has said. So those are some of the early mini lessons I do, along with um, how do you, what do you write in your log? What's appropriate? What are responses to literature? What do they look like? I do a lot of modeling on the chart paper of here's what a typical response might look like for a summary, or here's what one might look like for a sequence. And I do a lot of um, thinking aloud from the, about the stories that we're doing and putting my own thoughts and feelings on the chart so they can see how that might look in their logs. I'm trying to get the kids to see that um, all writing is writing. And it's not just when we have writing period during the day that they should be thinking about mechanics and strategies, that, but they should be thinking about those things anytime they write, whether it's in their journal or their reading log or during writing time. I will take samples from the students' logs and get permission from the students, and then I make them onto transparencies. And we put those transparencies on the overhead, and, and the students will talk about that, what was good about this entry, what could make it better. Um, I'll take both great examples of entries and examples that are very weak so they can say, well, this is, this is an interesting entry, but there's no meat to it, there's no body, there's no discussion, the questions are shallow. Um, and I, I always get those students' permission because I don't want them to be um, to feel bad about their work. I want them to feel positive about what they've done. And usually they're eager to do that because they want to know how to do better in their logs and they want to improve their work. You can use the book club to organize your curriculum around thematic units. The program also gives you the flexibility to respond to students' individual needs and interests. I try to organize my units around my social studies content. Um, teaching fifth grade, I use the American history as, as our curriculum, and there's a lot of really good historical fiction, and so it makes it real easy to tie my social studies history in with, with the novels. Um, I've also used fantasy, different genres, so using fantasy or realistic fiction as, as your unit. I've also done like survival, that works really well with fifth graders. If you think about the level of planning, it really happens at, um, at three different levels. There's planning for the academic year. Within that, there's planning for individual units. And then within the unit, there's planning for the individual day. So over the academic year, what we try to do is think of a, a one or two sort of big picture issues. Um, in Laura's classroom, for example, one year in fifth grade, the, the big picture issue was kind of how did our society come to be the way it is today? And all of her thematic units that year 
linked to that big theme in some way. Within an individual unit, there are a number of different ways it can be planned. Um, you can have a unit, for example, that's the study of an author, studying Mildred Taylor and studying her books that serves a dual function of also her books have the theme of being in the South and in the 30s and 40s and looking at issues of segregation. In that unit, all the students in the class read the same book at the same time. So they read Mississippi Bridge together and Song of the Trees together, and then Laura read aloud a third book by the same author. So the overarching year's theme drives the selection of individual units for the most part. Then once the individual unit is set, then you can begin to look at what you might want to do on a given day. After my mini lesson, which can take five to 15 minutes, depending on the focus and, and how involved we get, the kids move into reading the book. There are several different ways that we read the book. Sometimes I read aloud and they read portions of it silently. Sometimes they read only silently. Sometimes they partner up and read together. Once in a while, if I have a kid who needs some extra help, they may listen to the story on a tape while we're doing that. The kids read for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the text um, and how long it is. And then they move right into their writing. and. They might finish at different points, so they start writing whenever they finish. After about 20 minutes, I'll stop any that are still reading and ask them to go ahead and start writing. And I let them write for about 15 minutes. And after that, we move into, right into the book club groups. And the kids talk about the story. And then at the end, we come back and have the community share. And that's kind of where the kids get to share everything that they've been talking about in their groups, anything about the story that concerns them, um, any issues that I've heard among the groups We'll try to get brought into the conversation. I don't normally have a plan for what community share is going to be about. It just kind of depends what the kids want to talk about that day. All of these plans presuppose that a teacher has in mind those overall goals. For example, thinking about what do I want my children to learn in language conventions, comprehension, literary elements, and response to literature. And then looking over the course of the units and thinking about which units lend themselves to teaching about aspects of those particular categories and then looking at a daily plan and thinking, what can I do today to support my unit goals, which in turn support my year-long goals. The book club gives you a framework in which you can integrate other subject areas with reading instruction. About two years ago, I decided to combine book club as my literature, part of my literature language arts program with um, content area and use that to teach history and literacy at the same time. It was a good idea because it compacted my curriculum and I had more time to focus on those areas. One way that I like to set up the research is to have them tell me what would make a good report. And we put a list on the overhead projector and they tell all the things that would be interesting. For example, a battle or a famous person, um, a journal entry from a person in that time period. And then each group would um, put together one report and turn that one report in. So then students are accountable for the portions that they completed as well as a group project. I've seen other teachers though relate it to their science or technology curriculums. So I don't think it matters, even in the lower grades, if you use something broad like spiders or something like that, I think that you can, can tie the books in in a thematic way.